you are going to sink like a stone. You're not exactly the typical swimmer. If I get caught in a tide, it could be 24 hours. The planet's put you in some pretty dark places. This guy have a lot of guts. This is the biggest challenge I've ever done. I wouldn't prescribe the workouts I do to 99.99% .99 of people, but I want to do it because I want to see just how far you can push the human body. If people remember me as this fitness nomad who just explored fitness in all its components, then I will consider it a life well spent. <laughs> Typical day is, is always quite hard to define just because it changes so much. It usually starts 5, 5.30. Get out of the pool, then usually either into the office, talking to the team, presentations, writing articles. 12 o'clock rolls round, first strength session of the day. Back to work, back on the laptop, uh, talking social media. Six o'clock rolls round, on the air bike, running, something like that where it's just pure anaerobic lactic threshold. You want to throw up, your legs, your arms are burning. Seven, eight o'clock rolls around, strength session number two. By the time 10 o'clock comes round, I always say this is so intuitive. If you have another cardio session in you, do it. Main reason, work capacity. And you have to be so in tune with your body at that point. Because if you make the wrong decision, your whole week is, is then completely written off. Because you'll be ill, you'll be overtrained. And that's it. I will do that every day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. And if I go to bed and my head hits the pillow and I go, I couldn't have done much more in that 24 hours. Like, really, I couldn't. Then I, then I go to bed happy. And I repeat it again the next day. Perhaps the main reason why I do these challenges is to go against the sort of status quo of sports science and challenge what many people thought the human body was capable of. Uh, this began with the World's Strongest Marathon, so running a marathon, 26.2 miles, with a 1.4 tonne car strapped to my back. It really challenged this idea that strength and stamina can't coexist. In fact, we actually proved that they can complement each other in many ways. This was followed by the world's longest rope climb, so I climbed a rope repeatedly for 19 hours. That was the height of Everest, so that's 8,848 metres. This was then followed by the world's first triathlon. Probably my favourite one to date, Olympic distance triathlon, carrying a 100 pound tree. Again, looking at strength and stamina and the fusion of the two, but over three disciplines this time, not just like the world's strongest marathon. My next challenge is a sport I'm calling strongman swimming, which will see me swim 40 kilometres between St. Lucia and Martinique, pulling a 100 pound tree. So I first swam with the log in the Nevis Triathlon. So I started thinking about how I could explore that concept further and just push new boundaries. So I initially wanted to swim the English Channel, but wasn't allowed because, and I quote, I wasn't a registered vessel. I kept on looking and was told about this swim between Martinique and St. Lucia in the Caribbean. A few people have done the swim, plenty have failed, but no one's done it with a log. I'd only ever swum one and a half kilometers with a tree. This swim was 40 kilometers. A whole other ball game. I honestly didn't know what would happen. It would be my longest ever open water swim with or without a log. I think this is the biggest challenge I've ever done purely because there are so many unknowns. Waves, currents, jellyfish, sharks. So you just have to, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable and just be prepared for literally anything. That's scary and also kind of cool that makes it probably the hardest challenge. The sport of strongman swimming started at Lake Windermere, so north of England. Uh, the plan was swim 10 kilometers with a tree on this maiden voyage and see really where we're up to. Kind of nervous, 
in many ways because this is the first time that I'm swimming open water 10k in a wetsuit with a tree. Today we're going to jump in and just see what happens. You just have to make peace with the fact you're going to have to tie a tree to your trunk, get in and, and see how it feels. <laughs> At the Lake Windermere swim, I was really fortunate to have two good friends of mine with me. Olympian and double world champ in open water swimming, Kerry Ann Payne, and her husband, Dave Kerry, an international swimming beast in his own right. So what we can see from Ross is that he's still looking up quite a lot, so zigzagging from side to side. So again, really need to work on that. I would like to see him swimming a little bit more at the moment. I see him stop quite a lot. And actually, from a swimming perspective, the more times he stops, the greater the drag is. So what we can do now is really work on making him a more efficient swimmer. Oh, I'm so cold! <laughs> so, done your first challenge, 10K. How was it? It was a bad idea, wasn't it, Dave? <laughs> it was a, let's be honest. Oh, completely disoriented. I was just all over the shop. I started this morning wanting to swim 10 kilometers. Yeah. The watch says, I did 14.27. <laughs> I mean, how, how bad is that? 40% bad. <laughs> That's how bad. 40% variance in your final event. From Martinique to St. Lucia, 40K. 40% more than 40K yeah. is 56K. <laughs> you do not want to swim 56K. Not unless I have to, no, you're right. If I ever swam, it'd be about of a 10k be about 300 meters maximum. I mean, the information that we now have, and, and I think being able to compare that with the performance that you have to deliver yeah. um, in November is, is going to be yeah. really important. So, how are you feeling? I've seen better days. Okay, show everyone your injuries. Mmm, yeah. And um didn't really think it through with the wetsuit. <laughs> oh, it? every time I look at that. I could be out in the Caribbean for the final swim. For it, it could be I mean if, if I get caught in a tide, it could be twenty-four hours. Which is a long time and like as soon as the sun goes down and the weather drops I get cold but during the day that's like 15 hours with the sun beating down on your back so there's just so many things to look into so it's all very well me going oh my body feels good but that's, I don't think that's going to be the limiting factor there's so many other things great success <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know whether to go and eat or swim or cry, wait, train, cry. or cry. <laughs> like a seal. Oh, that's ah, good. Ah. But you told me there wasn't any sharks. Well, we and that's why I said I didn't mind you doing it. Yeah, Ross Edgley, everyone. You are going to sink like a stone. You're not exactly the typical swimmer. If I get caught in a tide, it could be 24 hours. The plan is to put you in some pretty dark places. This guy has a lot of guts. This is the biggest challenge I've ever done. 